I think I started running the minute I could walk. I just never stopped running and all my little girlfriends stopped running when they got to be, I don't know, 13, 14, 15 years old. And I was still running in the woods with the neighborhood dogs. And I was 20 years old and I was still running. <laughs> with, you know, I just loved to run because somehow it just made me feel more alive. And a woman was supposed to be passive. She was supposed to sacrifice her life and her dreams and her function in life was to be a support system for her husband who was the breadwinner. I felt there was something really basic missing in the kind of suburban life that was set out for us and especially for women. And I think I was looking for something deeper. I first saw the Boston Marathon in 1964. I went out there with my dad. And um, that was the first time I had ever seen other people running. I mean, it was amazing. I saw, I saw these people running by. I wasn't thinking whether they were men or women. I just saw these incredibly strong, enduring people. And to me, it said something very deep about what it is to be human. I mean, it's, it's as primal as when we stood up on the central plains of Africa and stood up on our hind feet and started to run. There's something so basically human about that kind of endurance and the courage it takes to run a race like that and to live a life of integrity. And I just, I fell in love with it. I wrote to the Boston Athletic Association and Will Cloney, the race director, wrote back and said, women are not physiologically able to run 26 miles or to run a marathon and we can't take the medical liability. And furthermore, um, women aren't allowed to run more than a mile and a half competitively, and it's a men's division race, and women aren't allowed. At the time, I was, riding f I was running 40 miles at a stretch, so I read this thing, <laughs> women are, can't run more than a mile and a half, and I say, okay, they have something to learn. But I also saw that if I could overturn this false belief about women, I could throw into question all the other false beliefs about women that have been used to keep women in virtual subjugation for centuries, really centuries. It, it was at that point I realized that my run was going to be a social statement. Here's the whole tragedy of prejudice. If you're not allowed to do something, how can you ever prove you can do it? I mean, if you're not allowed to do it, how do you even know you can do it? Because you're never even allowed to try. So I took a Greyhound bus back, arrived the day before the race, and I called my parents from the bus station, and, and where are you? You know, well, I'm in Boston. What are you doing in Boston? And I said, well, I came to run the Boston Marathon. Well, they totally freaked out. My father thought I was delusional. The poor dear, she's finally gone around the bend, and she thinks she's going to run the marathon. I convinced my mom to drive me. I said, Mom, this is going to help to change things for women. It's going to help to set, set women free. And that... Suddenly I struck a bell with her and, I mean, tears came to her eyes and she said she would drive me to the start. I couldn't believe it. It's the first time she'd ever been on my side in my battle against this thing. And so she drove me to the start and we hugged for the first time in years. And she, and she said, good luck. And there I was in Hopkinton on April 19th 1966, doing something that I thought was totally illegal. And I thought, um, you know, I, I was afraid I might get put in jail or the, I might be arrested. So I had my brother's Bermuda shorts on, my black top bathing suit, and a blue hooded sweatshirt that I had pulled up over my head so they couldn't tell I was a girl. And, and so I found a little clump of bushes near the start. The starting gun went off, half the pack went by, I jumped in. The guys behind me, studying my anatomy from the rear, I could hear them talking, is that a girl, is that a girl? I have to give them credit. It took them about three minutes. And uh, so I smiled and looked around, and, and it is a girl. And then um, this was the moment, because they could have easily shouldered me out of the race. Well, they said, I wish my girlfriend would run. I wish my wife would run. And, and they loved the fact that I was running. And I said, well, I'm afraid if I take this hood off and they see I'm a woman, they'll throw me out. And they said, 
we won't let them throw you out. So the men, runners, were friendly and protective. And the press started to pick up on this thing. There's a woman running and then a local radio station started broadcasting my progress. By the time I got to Wellesley College, which is about the halfway mark, the women were looking for me. And Diana Chapman Walsh later became the president of Wellesley. At that time, she was a student and she was watching this race and she wrote a nice article. She said, we were all waiting for you. And then when we saw you, we let out this inc incredible screech and cheer. And she said, we, somehow we knew that things were never gonna be the same after that. So I ran on all the way to Boston and I got there and, and the governor of Massachusetts came down, shook my hand, Governor Volpe, and the next day it was front page headlines. trying to create something new, you don't know what it is yet because you haven't created it yet. 